First of all, so nice to have you on here. Congratulations, lightweight world champion. Uh, I want to start off by asking you, how has becoming champion changed your life? Don't change too much. Just people talk with me like a, like a, like a champion. That's it. My life is the same. Don't change too much. I don't, I don't, I don't like change my life too much. I like the the humble life you've had so many ups and downs and to finally be able to hold the championship and to you know wear it proudly hold it proudly defend it proudly uh what does that mean to you when you go back and you look at everything that has happened in your career to finally be able to hold the championship minha minha carreira toda foi foi muito conturbada por lesões antes de ser um atleta antes de estrear no MMA. Eu já estreiei, eu já comecei no MMA com uma lesão no ligamento cruzado anterior. Então, minha vida toda, ela foi conturbada por lesões, lesões sérias. Isso é muito difícil. Um atleta se, se sustentar por tanto tempo em alto nível e mesmo depois de tanto tempo ser campeão. Isso é muito difícil. É, continua sendo difícil, mas eu estou firme, forte e pronto para vencer mais uma vez. Ninguém não quer saber o que, que acontece, as lesões que acontecem, só quero saber de títulos, vitórias e derrotas, mas eu continuo firme. Eu, é, eu fiz seis lutas, eu fiz seis lutas com, com o ligamento cruzado rompido e muita dedicação, é muito difícil isso. É, mas eu continuo firme e forte, alguns altos e baixos da minha vida, eu acho que eu poderia ter sido melhor por causa dessa, dessas lesões, mas ninguém quer saber disso, é, todo mundo quer saber da vitória ou de títulos, derrotas e histórias, histórias tristes, ninguém quer ouvir. And that's, you know, that's the thing you mentioned, uh, you know, having your first couple of fights with a torn ACL, which is, you know, I can't even imagine what that is like. And on top of that, every other, you know, injury that you dealt with. Uh, with that being said, what was the thing that kept you moving forward, especially because it's not just a thing that you have to deal with it mentally, like, oh, this is just a mental challenge. No, this is a physical challenge that you have to con consistently overcome. So what kept you going? What kept you motivated to say, I'm not going to give up and I'm not going to quit. É, primeiro de tudo, eu sempre tive muita vontade de, de lutar MMA. Então, eu não tinha dinheiro para fazer uma cirurgia particular de joelho. Aqui era era pelo SUS, o sistema único de saúde aqui para conseguir um dia demorar muito. Então, eu continuei treinando, mesmo lesionado e tentando fazer minhas lutas com um ligamento assim. Eu não me importava a dor que eu ia sentir e o que ia acontecer. Eu só queria lutar. Não importa o que ia acontecer com minha perna. Eu acho que a minha vontade era maior do que qualquer outra coisa, que qualquer outra dor que eu sentia, porque meu meu joelho sempre estava é, desestabilizando nos treinos, eu sempre estava sentindo dor na academia, mas eu às vezes, às, às vezes até chorava depois de, disso acontecer no treino, mas eu nunca parei. Eu queria ter eu queria ter experiência de lutar, fui fazendo lutas assim, fui vencendo, é, mas chegou um momento que meu joelho eu não ele travou e eu não conseguia mais me movimentar direito. Então foi depois que eu decidi procurar para fazer a cirurgia. And how are you feeling now on that end of things? And I know you recently dealt, uh, you had to, uh, you had a, a fight originally scheduled for July and, uh, you know, that didn't end up happening. So for you, was that frustrating to not be able to fight in July? Yes, for sure. I love, I love, I love fight. I love, for me, I, I fight like a three or four fights in the year. So that's crazy for me because uh, tomorrow is gonna be one year. We are our, our fight. I fought, so it's too hard to me. It's like a, é como se tivesse numa prisão, Matheus. It's like if I'm in a in a prison cell. 
Wow. I can't even. So now, you know, going into this fight and we are now just two weeks away from this fight with Usman. Uh, how do you feel you are uh, mentally? How are you physically in terms of just like wanting to get in there and have this fight already with Usman? Yes, I'm, I'm very hungry. Uh, I'm very excited, but I'm very calm, very relaxed at the same time. Because the old lion is prepared to, to kill the the enemy. So I don't have a I don't have any rush. I don't have any any rush. I just take my time, wait and finish my opponent. Now, Usman is undefeated. So the fact the fact that you're defending your championship against an undefeated uh, Usman, how what kind of challenges does that pose for you? And also, how do you prepare for someone like him, who's a very accomplished grappler? Yeah, he's a young lion, so he come very, very. He tried everything because he wanted my belt. I'm prepared for. I'm ready for everything. So that's it. I don't. I don't talk too much. He like to talk shit about me. He like to come to my Instagram and talk some shit. So let's see. Let's see what has happened. 18 November. So I'm ready. I'm a pit bull. One question that I do want to make sure I ask you is what are your thoughts on AJ McKee moving up to the lightweight division? For me, don't change nothing. He's the king to talk shit. So... He wanna he wanna fight for the for the title, like uh, the first guy when he he going up to the lightweight. So he's a funny guy. He's a joke. <laughs> the last fight was very very fun. Man. He, he he don't show nothing, nothing. I can beat him very easy. I like to beat guys like him because he loved, he's the king of the talk shit. So I love guys like this. Talk shit, he, he feel like a king, he feel like I'm the man. And uh, you're there and kick his ass, that's it. And now what about Eddie Alvarez? He's somebody who recently became a free agent. Is he somebody that you would like to see uh, return to Bellator? Yeah, Matheus, I'm thinking I'm going to give an employee. I'm thinking I'm going to give an employee another one in Bellator, right? O primeiro foi Peter Quill e agora tá sendo o Ed Alves, que tá aí com. tá aí com. com tá solto e, e é, todo mundo só pergunta isso. <risos> fala, fala aí que eu vou querer aposentar, a porcentagem se ele entrar no Belator, vou querer minha porcentagem. <risos> That's awesome. My last question for you is before we go: uh, what kind of champion do you want to be? Uh, what do you hope your reign as champion looks like when you go back and you look back at the history books and uh, for Bellator? Eu quero que lembre de mim como um cara que aonde bate, quando bate, quando acerta, nocautei o cara, assim como o Mike Tyson fazia. Quando ele acertava um soco, tudo acabava. Depois do soco que ele mandava, todo mundo mudava de postura, todo mundo é, mudava de ideia e aquelas palavras que falaram antes da luta eram engolidas depois de um soco que ele desferia. Então eu quero ser lembrado assim, o rei do Pitbull, o rei dos nocautes. Amazing. Thank you so much for this interview. I'd love getting to chat with you. Uh, good luck on your fight. And thank you so thank much you. for taking the time to chat with me today. Have a nice day.